Hello everybody, uh, this is my first YouTube video and uh, today I'm going to be showing some uh, Aladdin lamps and best practices. Uh, there is not a lot out there that are fairly new and up to date and today I'd like to show what I do and how I utilize these uh, lamps today pretty much almost every day. I have them at the house here in my rec room. I also have them up at the cottage. Um, power outages happen a lot up there. And um, I have three or four lamps running, power goes out, I'm watching TV, TV shuts off, I start playing board games. And uh, they heat the place and uh, they're, uh, they're actually a lot of fun to collect and uh, trade and enjoy. So today I'm going to be using or utilizing two Aladdin lamps. This is a mid-30s floor lamp, at least the pedestal portion is. and the. Uh, the shade's a Whipple Light original shade, probably from the later 40s or early 50s. Uh, and you can see in the corner over here, I have another 30s lamp as well. Um, it's got electrified, it's electrified, and it has one of the newer style uh, lamp shades from uh, Crown Brands that came out last year. These, uh, these look really good, um, but when the light's on, they're, it's not quite the same as a Whipple Light. But, uh, you know, I'm really happy that they... You know, going back into production, so I'm going to use these on hanging lamps uh, around the cottage because it got that rustic look. The second lamp I'm going to be lighting today is, you know, uh, mid 30s, clear, cathedral, one piece. Uh, I prefer utilizing uh, clear lamps because I can easily tell, hey, this this guy's half full. They burn about eight to ten hours to. Um, you know, to a, you know, a full font. I think it's uh, a quart or so, a couple quarts in there. Uh, another reason why I use this one, it's, it actually has a, a crack in the base or a chip out of it. I don't know if you can really see it, but uh, it is definitely detectable when you flip it upside down. So from a collector's point of view, it's really not worth much. But uh, from a functioning point of view, the thing works 100%. It's got an original B burner on it. Uh, new style mantle uh, and a new style chimney. So these new uh, borosilicate chimneys that uh, Crown Brand has done, these are actually fantastic chimneys. These, in my opinion, are the best chimneys out there. And I have literally a hundred chimneys of all different eras, either the heelless, the push-on style, or the locks-on, twist lock style. And the problem with the twist lock ones. Um, if they over tighten themselves, they can crack. The older ones, I mean, I don't know. They're, they're just not reliable. Uh, they break quite often. But these new ones, I haven't broke one yet in about a year and a half. Uh, you know, if you drop them, of course, you're going to break them. So on this particular floor lamp, this has got the newer Genie 3 with the Max Bright 500 uh, font on it. New style chimney. Uh, new style, uh, you know, bug screen slash, uh, you know, protector so I don't burn my ceiling because it's, I'll try to get up there, it's really only about 30 inches above it. So I put that on there and it works really well. Um, this one actually has an old style uh, mantle. So this was the older ones with the, uh, I guess it was thorium or whatever they, you know, they coated them with. Uh, it burns a different color. So it burns more yellow. It's a softer color, and the new ones burn whiter. Not a big deal, um, but I can show you that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to top this guy up. I'm going to show you how, how to fill, how to take care of these things, um, at least get them ready to burn. Big thing with these things, you, you can't just light them up and leave them. You've got to warm them up. You've got to clean the wicks you know, every second time or every eight hours. You've got to clean the wick. I find that when you blow them out, the problem is that it still kind of burns a little bit and it leaves residue on the wick um, which causes you know um, an irregular burn or um, uh, you know little hot spots that come through so you just got to trim them every time so let's just take this into the workshop it's pretty full but let me top it up anyway just for the heck of it put it down here now I use this device here um, you know I spent a couple of years trying to figure out how to fill these things without pouring you know kerosene everywhere it's a total mess and it kind of smells a little um, 
So I found this not so long ago. It's made by what Pro Tool out of the States. Made in America. It's got a lawnmower guy there. And it comes with these extra little pieces here. And you can screw them onto a five gallon gas can or smaller. Uh, but the one it actually has here uh, in there will fit most one gallon uh, kerosene containers. Um, it also has a twist lock top on it right there. You can valve it off. Plus it's got a little cap plug on the very end. And the beautiful part of that is it just keeps all the vapors inside. So there's a basically a windshield washer fluid you can use. Uh, I tend to recycle these ZEP containers. I, I kind of have a real liking for this and I have one as you can see right on here. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and fill it here. So I'm going to remove the cap. And pop this piece off. Unlock it there. Just going to put the Put it inside and just give it a little squeeze, let the air flow back in. There we go, that's good. Don't want to overfill these things, that's for sure. Um, it's best to, uh, you know, leave that's about as full as I like to have them right there, and that's probably what the manufacturer recommends too. Uh, the ones with the flush mount caps, that's the older style ones, like on that cathedral. Uh, those ones there uh, definitely fill it up even lower because um, if you fill it up and then you walk away and uh, it could just leak a little bit. So light these guys up, do a couple things here. Oh, I keep a wick cleaner handy, new style wick cleaner. I use them on pretty much everything. They come with the, the new ones. Just got to grab a lighter here. Oh, I'm missing my lighter. Oh, it's right there. And so I take the shade off. I put the shades somewhere so I don't step break it. These things, this one's got a pretty big crack in it. Uh, still very usable. Uh, looks really good when the light's on. I'm going to twist this off. I'm going to set this down. Then I'm going to pull the flame spreader out. Just twist around. I'm going to advance it up a couple turns. And you put it on just lightly and give it a light two turns and you do it clockwise because of the way the wick is done that's it that's it it's good as go cool now so then I'm going to advance it back down I'm going to put the flame spreader back in and I have like to have around a quarter inch before I light it or at least a quarter inch of wick and then I kind of light it one side and then the other side and I put the gallery on and click it into position and you leave it on low this is excellent. You just want to heat the top part. You want to walk away now and go start. I'm going to go walk away and start the other one. Uh, and let this guy warm up because it, it takes a proper warm up. Uh, you don't want to see too much, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, you'll see little flame spikes in certain spots. So I'll let this guy warm up and let's go over and do the, the same to this cathedral here. So I use these little condiment caps to turn them out. To blow them out and I also put my wick cleaner in them because sometimes it has little bits of carbon on it. Don't want to get carbon everywhere, get, get the wife yelling at me. All right, so pull the wick cleaner out, a couple turns up. Same thing, a couple quick turns. Bring it back down, bring it back up a little bit. Light, light. same thing. Now it's got a little bit of a, see that little bit of a little flame layer like that? that? We don't want to see that. So sometimes you can bring it back and you can pop off your gallery and reposition into a new spot. And sometimes you can get rid of that little flame spike. Sometimes it's just a little piece of carbon on there. I'm going to bring that up nice and slow. Oops, go the wrong way. I go the right way. And let that guy warm up. Same thing. It's just Warming up the top. I'm going to shut some lights off down here so you can get an idea of uh, what type of light. This one's definitely got a little hot spot in there. So we're just going to let that go simmer down a little bit and see if I can get it to go under control. And I'm going to just turn down the LED lights in here. 
So it's really best to warm these guys up for about 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, you'll see how much you can really advance the wick and throttle it up. Um, eventually it's going to, uh, if, you, if you turn it up too much, you're going to get those little flame spikes. The whole idea is you're trying to have one consistent flame, uh, round circular flame, um, and prevent these flame spikes. Because these flame spikes, uh, if unattended to, uh, you know, like this, it's still going here. You see a bit of a hot spot there. So we're just going to let that warm up, and it, it should go away. I've been burning this one consistently for, oh, at least a month now. Um, more than that, probably two months on this uh, wick and mantle. And uh, it's been working very well. Uh, it overburned once or twice. Um, not sure why. You just got to keep an eye on them. Uh, let, as I said, let them warm up completely before putting a shade on them. The big fortunate thing is I have one of these smoke detectors right up here. And it's a fairly new one. And it's really, really, really accurate. And it's really sensitive. So if, any, if this lamp or that lamp overburns before it even really gets to you know super duper carboned up uh, the mantle that is uh, it goes off and I come over and go, oh it's overburning I basically would turn it down for you turn it down about half for about 30 seconds let it cool a little bit and then turn it up just a bit and and it'll burn off the carbon it's burned the carbon off this at least twice you definitely don't want to be doing that on a regular basis because um, it deforms the actual, you know, the webbing of the mantle um, and can break it. This one here is down a little bit too low. Let's bring this up. All right. It's got a few little flame spikes in there, but it's uh, it's working well. It'll, it'll come around. I'm going to shut off some more lights here. We're going to go to more of a darker room now. Um going to shut off the light in the furnace room slash workshop and uh, these guys are coming along I'm just gonna bring that up a little bit more and we're gonna come over to this guy here and it's uh, it's doing okay it's got a couple of spikes in it though it's kind of Unfortunate for this video, but because uh, they weren't there the other day, so you know you got to sort of be use your head when it's coming uh, when you're using these lamps. You just can't just you know if you're going to be absent-minded, you're going to be partying or anything like that. Forget, just don't use these things. Go get a you know just turn the lights on. This is just for ambiance. Uh, this is still warming up. It's only been probably what about five minutes or so. So it, it really it really takes about ten. 10 to 15 for these things to get the proper operating temperature. But I'm just going to go ahead and put this whip light shade on it. And, uh, and you can see that you'll see the crack in it. But if you turn around one way, it's not as bad. Um, and you'll see that it's got this sort of a ribbon and, uh, you know, flowers and leaves on it. It's quite, it's quite pretty. Um, this other one that I have here is also very nice. It's got a few little burn holes in it, but you know what? Things 50, 60 years old. Oh, well, it's more than 50. It's 60 or 70 years old. Um, it's it's in pretty good shape for you know a 60 odd year old shade. Uh, I like them. I have some of the newer ones up at my cottage that you know the coach is in four. Um, I'm gonna put this new style shade on here so you can see that you know it really does look good like the artwork's nice but since it's just like this is how you tell whipple light you can really see your hand through it whereas anything that's paper um, it's not going to be as I mean it's pretty don't get me wrong it's just not quite as nice and then when you put your hand behind it well you just Actually, these ones are, are pretty good. So, but going back to the back to the Whipple light. As you can see, it's uh, it's 
quite a nice shade. I'm going to pull it off and just make sure that the, everything's good here. Um, yeah, it might get a little bit brighter. It definitely has one big flame spike, spike in there. So uh, it's definitely usable right now. It's not, I would say this is about 60 to 70 percent what it can light. When you get these things dialed in and they're really kind of rocking and rolling, uh, it really definitely will put out, you know, they say six, like a 60 watt bulb. I'd probably say more like a 40 watt bulb in re all reality. Um, I have some other lamps over here that uh, are electrified, but electrified properly so I can convert them back to oil. I didn't butcher them. So I have a Model 4, and I can't remember what this other one is. I think it's a 6. And I put these guys on a little dimmer. I use uh, uh, LED uh, candlesticks uh, bulbs in there. Um, you know, the Edison style where you can see the filament. And then I got it on a dimmer. And so when I come down and it's really hot or I don't feel like running the, um, the kerosene, I'm going to just touch these guys on. I have other ones over here as well, too. And these guys I put on little switches, no dimmers. Um, these are just like extras in my collection, duplicates, I guess. And uh, they're, uh, they're nice. And I'm back over here. Well, that's really it. Uh, I just wanted to uh, show a few, uh, show off a few of my lamps, and uh, you know, uh, you know, best practices that I call them, which would be you know, filling them. Um, you know, pe people ask what kind of fuel. Uh, I buy 1K kerosene. Uh, there's a a place just the town over that has it on. The, uh, at the gas station, and I bring a you know five gallon blue pail and fill it up. And uh, well, I'm in Canada here, so we buy it in liters, and it's about a dollar fifty a liter, probably about uh, which is about a third of the price it would cost to run down to the hardware store or Canadian Tire and buy kerosene uh, there. And so what I do is I have a five gallon here and a five gallon at the cottage, and when they get low, I just go there and I fill them up. It costs about thirty dollars to fill it up. And um, then I transfer it into the smaller containers uh, to bring them inside the cottage or the house. And I, I pour it outside in the garage in case I spill it, because typically you're going to spill some. And if it stinks up the garage, it's only there for a day. But in the house, uh, you know, it, it can be a little annoying. Um, it doesn't really bother me. I'm more conscientious about other people not liking it. Um, and to blow these things out, uh, a couple different ways of doing it. One way. Uh, on the all, all side draft burners, you know, you see that one's starting to really get really bright. On all side draft burners, you can see right here, there is, I don't know if you can see that or not, there is a little open slot there. So if you turn the wick down and blow really hard, and usually it takes two blows, like real quick, one after another, it will blow out. Other than that, um, you'd have to pull on this one, you'd have to pull that protector on the top, bug screen heat protector on the top and blow. Uh, on these guys here, I'll just typically go like this and blow down the, the chimney. Uh, sometimes I just blow down the chimney and I drop this on right away and that kind of stops the convection. Uh, and that's really what smells up the house is when you turn these things off, it's like a, a candle when you blow it out, it kind of smokes and it doesn't burn any, it's not burning anymore. And so what happens is it really makes a smell. And just like a candle, you have to trim the wick back. Uh, you have to do the same to these. But uh, you'll find that uh, if you, you know, take good care of them, well, I think you can see the crack in the, in the base there now. It's right there. It's kind of obvious. Uh, it doesn't really affect it. It's, uh, you know, for a mid-30s lamp, uh, you know, the thing is 85 years old. It's, uh, it works very well. Uh, the new Max Bright 500s, they're every bit as good as the old ones. Um, I only burn the Max Bright 500s up at the cottage. Uh, I have, you know, you know, 100 Model Bs kicking around. <clears throat> and I keep one going just for nostalgic purposes, but I find that the, you know, using the new ones with the new supplies, uh, they work better. Uh, I'm going to do some videos on chimneys, wicks, 
mantles, and other things coming up in the future. Uh, that uh, you know, if anybody has any recommendations, what they'd like to see, let me know. And if they have any good ideas uh, they want to share, they can post them, and uh, maybe I can shoot some videos on that. And uh, I'll be doing some purchases, so I basically buy and sell and trade these on the side. I have a real job, but this is kind of what I've been doing for 20 years, just as a hobby. And um, I, I buy, you know, collections and stuff like that. So if you see any collections that need to be bought, uh, I, and then I trade these with other uh, collectors uh, around. And, uh, you know, once in a while I'll find something rare. Uh, there's a lot of really common ones out there. You can buy these for $50, $60, like a, you know, uh, I'm going to turn the light back on. You can buy, well, maybe I'll just go over this way here, excuse me. Turn on one of the other lights over here. So you can buy real easily any of the tall Lincoln drapes. Uh, at least in Ontario, these were sold here by the thousands and thousands. I usually buy those for sixty dollars. Sometimes complete with a chimney. Uh, you got to put a new wick in it, clean them up, ungum them. Um, and they work really well. That's one of my very first lamps I got over 20 years ago was one of those. And, uh, and then I just started to collect them after that. So, but, uh, and then I get into some other style lamps too. When I see a good center wick design that I like at a good price, I'll pick it up, especially if it's super clean. And I, I can show some other style of lamps that I have as well in my collection. Well, thank you very much, and uh, I hope you enjoyed my video.